Hey guys, Pastor Anthony, I am back. Today we're going to be talking about something that's really, really important and really, really fun, okay? Talking about Jesus, 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 and everybody loves Jesus, especially on this channel. <laughs> uh, your faith has made you well. This is basically about all of Jesus' uh, time that where Jesus um, healed people by their faith, not his own, in Jesus' name. Of course, he had faith. He was God's son. But he, he healed them because of their faith, guys. That, that's the re that, that was what's so great about it. You know, he, he, he said it. He explained it every time. I'm healing you by your faith alone. Your faith alone in Jesus' name. The faith that we should have in Jesus' name. That Jesus is still alive today and is still here with us today in Jesus' name. Jesus came down from heaven, guys. He came down from heaven sitting next to his father, you know, gave up that, sacrificed that to come down to earth and be, to be born on the earth as an infant and grow up and deal with everything we had to deal with. All the, you know, all the pitfalls, all the tri tribulations and trials and all the demons and everything that were still on the earth at that time. You know, uh, they're, they were on the earth at that time. They're on the earth now. You know, he, he explained that in Jesus' name. We're not talking about that today, but I'm just saying he dealt with all of that. Never sinned once, Okay went through his assignment, lived 33 and a half years, and died, was resurrected, and lived on forever in Jesus' name. So, we're going to talk about Jesus, okay? Jesus chose to help everyone he met, everywhere he went, okay? He had no money and no transportation. He chose to journey away from his home to help others, not knowing where he'd be laying his head that night. Jesus said this to his people to highlight this fact during his ministry, guys. Foxes have dens living, and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Luke 9.58 So you see, Jesus was a humble man. He was a humble man. He was a great man. He loved people. He loved everyone in Jesus' name. And you would think that he did not know the people that he helped. However, throughout his ministry, he knew intimate personal things about many people that astonished the recipients and many others, as, as you will see. He chose to live live like this every day when he woke up, and he never seemed to have a problem with it. He never let anyone or anything bother him. No matter his situation, he was loving and helpful to anyone and everyone. He had no bias and no racial preferences. He tried to help them no matter where they were from or where, what they had been taught. This is a life that he chose, and his father was with him the whole time as he sacrificed all that he could have done on his own because he was a human he could have chose to go do what other humans do in Jesus name who don't follow their assignment um, but he didn't he was sinless so he always went his father's way so he was always with his father he was always doing his father's business he's always doing his father's work in Jesus name so what he did and how much he sacrificed is echoed for just over 2,000 years from the time of his birth which changed our dating forever and all the way to today, he has turned the extremely tormented people into very kind and loving, peaceful people. Okay? He has turned the extremely tormented into very kind and loving, peaceful people. That is what Jesus does. That is what who he is. And that is why we love him in Jesus' name. He can turn the worst to the best in Jesus' name. And he, do, and he did it. He did it in Paul. He turned the worst to the best. Paul was a murderer of Christians, turned him into the father of Christianity to the Gentiles. Who else can do that but Jesus, you know? <laughs> um, Jesus came in and showed people compassion instead of violence. He healed people instead of hurting them. He loved them instead of hating them. He took everything they had been taught and turned on its head. And all the while, he told them everything he perceived to do to them or for them was made possible by their faith that he could not by him. Therefore, people followed and loved him. Therefore, therefore, they defied all other rule and did not let the oppression of the world as they knew it bother them. They did this through the love and peace of Christ, guys, which pierced further than any other man made weapon or idea that could ever be used on them. He saved them from the fear of death and showed them how to really live, how to experience true joy, the joy that radiates through your body and tingles your toes. You ever felt that joy in Jesus' name? 
You ever felt that? That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. That's that's Jesus' spirit, you know, filling you up, you know, is the radiates through your body and tingles your toes. I mean, it is the greatest feeling in the world, and you don't get it by doing the things of this world. This happened to every follower of Jesus, and even the people in the crowd. They witnessed a miracle in their eyes. They witnessed a person who they knew before that did not match the person that they see before them now. The attitude was gone. The hate was gone. The bitterness was gone. And most of all, he had met their greatest need to earn their gratitude. It was not forced and it was not solicited. It came as an overwhelming urge inside the people that they never knew they had. It came through a relationship with him. So now we're going to give you, give, give you some examples of when Jesus healed people because they had the faith that they could in Jesus' name. I love these things. I love I love these 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 uh uh, history accounts in Jesus' name. Jesus, Jesus and his people and his uh, disciples were approached by a Roman officer whose servant or son was sick. He said, Lord, my young servant's son lies in bed, paralyzed and in terrible pain. Jesus exclaims, I will come and heal him. The man had so much faith that Jesus could heal his servant's son that Jesus agreed to go to his house. Didn't even know the man. He was a Roman. <laughs> The officer refused and exclaimed he was not worthy enough to have Jesus step into there. So think about this guy. This guy is a Roman and he and he knows Jesus and loves Jesus so much that he's like, you can't even step into my house. You're too holy in Jesus' name. And this is a Roman. He also exclaimed, For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this one, go and he goes, and to another, come and he comes, and to my servant, do this and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled. Jesus turned to his followers and Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. And I tell you this, that many Gentiles will come from all over the world, from east to west, and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those for whom the kingdom was prepared, will be thrown into the outer darkness, will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you know why he said that? Because those people, those, those people from the east and the west, from Gentiles from all over the world will believe. They'll have ears to hear and eyes to see. And and the people who were Israel's people, you know, Israel, people who are God's people won't believe. They won't believe in him. They won't believe in Jesus. Then he healed the man's servant's son from where he stood to reward the man's faith. And his son was healed in Jesus' name. Matthew 8, 5, Luke 7, 1, John 4, 46. Well, look at that. Don't you love it? But look at that healing. Don't you love it? All right, here's another one. One of the rulers of sin God came, Jerus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and begged him earnestly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed. He, he, he knew that Jesus just laying his hand on her, would be she would be healed. He had the faith of that in Jesus' name. And she will live. Jesus said to him, I will heal her. So Jesus went with him. While he was walking there, a certain woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many, from many positions, she had spent all that she had and she was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Okay? For she said, If only I may touch his clothes, I should be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she fell on her body and she was healed of her affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself the power had gone out of him, turned around the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say you touch me? He looked around to see her, see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. There you go. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. All right. Here's another one. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house who said, okay, this is a continuation of the next of the, of the one from before because this is what happened. While he was still speaking, some came from the ruler of the synagogue's house and, who said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, do not be afraid. Only believe. And he permitted no one to follow his, him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. He came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw a tumult, and those who wept and wailed loudly. 
when he came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. But when he had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child, and those who were with him, in it where the child was lying. Then he took the child by the hand and said to her, Talitha Kumi, which translated, Little girl, I say to you, arise. Immediately the girl arose and walked, for she was twelve years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know, and it said that something should be given to her to eat. Matthew 9, 24, Mark 5, 21, Luke 8, 52. Now, why did he say no one should know? Because he was a humble man. Because he was trying to protect himself. He was trying to protect his, his uh, disciples, really. Not really himself. He could protect himself. But he was trying to protect his disciples from getting hurt, from people trying to destroy him in Jesus' name. Okay, next one. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, because he, it was like in a big crowd, he was in a he was in a house, crowded, surrounded the house, and he was he was teaching, he was ministering. They went on the house top and let him down with his with his bed through the tiling in the midst before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to him, "Man, your sins are forgiven you." And the scribes and Pharisees began to reason, "Who's who's began to reason, saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies?'" Who can forgive such sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on, and departed to his own house. Glorifying God. All right, here's another one. Behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. The disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour, along with me others. Matthew fifteen twenty two, Mark seven twenty five. Now it sounded like Jesus was being mean to this woman. What he was doing, he was testing her faith. He wasn't being mean to her. He knew that she was gonna that she was gonna have the right faith, so that's why he did it. If if she if if he knew that because he knows her life from beginning to end. If he didn't know, if she wouldn't have had the right faith, she would he he wouldn't have seen her in Jesus' name. Here's the next one. As he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great multitude, blind Barnabas, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, "Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me." Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. Once again, he saw his faith again. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. Throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight, followed Jesus on the road, Matthew 20, 29, Mark 10, 46. So Jesus told them, I tell you the truth, if you have faith and you don't doubt, you can do things like this and much more. You can even say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will be happened. You can pray for anything. If you have faith, you will receive it. It will happen, guys. You can pray for anything. If you have faith, you will receive it. Matthew 21, 18. Mark eleven twelve. This is right after he, he uh, made the fig tree not bear fruit. <laughs> when he did this. Okay. Uh, this is after the... This right here is after the Lord's Supper. And this is when Peter's faith was tested. And he failed. Even though he was Peter. Peter was like one of the greatest 
men of God, and he still failed in Jesus' name because he because he couldn't um, sacrifice his life. But the thing is, is that he, Jesus knew that, and he knew that he wasn't he shouldn't sacrifice his life because if he did, then he would never have wrote wrote the books that he wrote, you know, the books in the New Testament. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, indeed, Satan has asked for you to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. When you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. All right. Now, this is the same. This is this is the whole thing about, you know, whether you go through tri tri trials and tribulations, you know, just like Job, you'll go, go through trials and tribulations, um, just like Joseph, trials and tribulations, just like, you know, all of them. You know, Moses, trials and tribulations, um, you know, wilderness seasons, all that kind of stuff. You know, you go through all that. Even Jesus had to go through trials and tribulations. He had to go through a, a wilderness season. Forty days, forty nights in the wilderness, in Jesus' name. The devil came to him three times, tried to tempt him. Um, obviously, Jesus didn't go with him in Jesus' name. All right, so now we're going to talk about the uh, Ephesians 6.10, spoken by Paul the Apostle. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with, with, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world. <coughs> Excuse me, demons, get out of my mouth in Jesus' name. I bind you in the name of Jesus on earth it is in heaven. Preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the whole world, received up in glory for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. All right, that's Paul. He was a murderer of Christians. And he said that in Jesus' name. Father of Christianity through the Gentiles in Jesus' name. All right, we're going to 1 Timothy 6.12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. All right? So that your father can say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount. So now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. All right, now this is the faithful church, Revelations 3, 7. This is Revelations, guys. And the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? This is the one you want to be in right here. These things says, he is holy. He who is true. He who is the key of David. He who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door. And no one can shut it. For you have little strength, have kept my word and not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet and to know that I have loved you because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name, in Jesus' name. All right, guys, what do you think of that one? That was a good one, wasn't it? Yeah, I feel the Holy Spirit in me. I feel the Holy Spirit going in Jesus' name. My name is Pastor Anthony. I love this one. I love this. this is a great one right here. I've got another one coming up. It's going to be really good. It's about blessings. You know, I've been going dark here in the last couple of couple. You know, I figured I figured I'd do some light stuff. Do some light stuff. And, you know, let's let's make this. Let's go make it go viral, Lord. Let's go make it go viral, guys. In Jesus' name, let's make it go viral. Come on, viral, viral, viral. We want this to go all over the world in Jesus' name. Jesus' light, Jesus' miracles, Jesus' continents, everything all over the world in Jesus' name. My name is Pastor Anthony. 
be blessed and I will make another video that is about blessings in Jesus name and you will see how we are blessed how we get blessed in Jesus name I love you guys I am Pastor Anthony and I will see you in the next video